Okay guys, Bondo, big biscuit. He's gonna grease the tractor up. Carl's getting a little dry. This is what we're doing today, guys. We got a big pole barn that we're prepping. We're gonna prep this barn and uh, pour it tomorrow morning. So probably be one video, but uh, got big tuna in here, scraping out the edges. So this is how we get the barns, guys, usually. They're pretty rough inside. So you can see kind of a mess, but we're used to doing this work. So this is how we get them 99% of the time. See all the big rocks and stuff, guys, over right here. It's all high and low and it's a mess. So what we do is come in here with Carl and scrape this all out, take all this rockier material out of here and we'll put some fine um, crushed gravel in here and we'll tamp it down and that's what we're going to do we're going to take this a lot of this material i'm just going to run it out here and put it along the side of this barn right here he's got a nice low spot here we can put it all down through here so that's what we're going to do um, like i said generally this is how we get them 99.9 percent .9 of the time they're not ready to go so i just usually you know work that right into the deal so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna prep today and we're gonna pour tomorrow this barn is 30 by 48 if i recall um so that's what we're doing stay tuned big biscuit grease and carl right here guys carl needs some lubrication Got the new Milwaukee grease gun that uh, Big Biscuit and Scotty bought me for. What'd you get me that for my birthday or something? Yeah. I, Carl, this is that's a gift for Carl, not for me. Carl in the excavator. Uh, I think there's some there's some inside of here. Right in here. Remember where all these are. So not I used to do this for a living. Alright, well why didn't you know where they all were then? I haven't done a Kubota, but I know enough to pay attention. I've done a Kubota. I've done a Kubota a couple times. I've only done like a hundred different pieces of equipment. I think I can figure it out. Remember where they are. Here's the man. Yeah, I don't know where they are. Oh, yeah, they're in the back there. Right there. So this is what we do first, guys. Step one, we go around kind of get all the crap out from the edge because I can't get up close to the edge so take the come alongs and pull all that stuff out get it down a little deeper than where we want it that's what big tuna is doing over here we got a big pile right here so I'm gonna jump on Carl and start scratching this out right now look at guys Carl's got a full tank of fuel today and he's ready to work he is freshly greased He's ready to go here. We're gonna scrape this crap out of here. A big old pile right there, guys. Gonna back drag it a little bit. Hey guys, Bondo here. So we got a 30 by 48 building here that we're prepping. Um, this building was a little unique because the skirt board was a 2 by 8 And actually when I looked at the barn, I thought the grade was going to be a little bit low. And actually when we got in here, I realized that that 2 by 8 was not set to the height of the top of the floor. Usually these barns are built with a 2 by 6 skirt board and the top of the two by six is usually where the concrete ends up but when they built this barn they didn't do it that way so um, we had to take a lot of material out of here and uh, this was 
this wasn't really nice material to work with. It had some bigger stones and stuff in it. My plan was to take a little bit of this out and add some good stone, you know, some crushed up gravel. And uh, I actually had to cancel. I had that ordered. And uh, when I got there in the, that morning, I called the guy and canceled the delivery because we didn't need that stuff. We just ended up taking a bunch of this stuff out and working with it, getting all the big rocks out of it, and we got it pretty level. Actually saved the customer a little bit of money because he didn't have to buy that load of gravel. They told me he had to buy a load of gravel and we were going to put it in. So that kind of worked out, but it wasn't real easy to work with this stuff, to be honest with you. Had a lot of rocks in it and stuff, as you can see. But we got it, the three of us. Um, we got it cleaned out. I don't know, it didn't take us that long, probably maybe four or five hours to do this whole barn ourselves and get it all ready. And uh, then we, we're going to pour this barn um, in the same video, guys. It's kind of a long video, but we uh, I just made one video out of it. And stay tuned because we actually poured the apron the same day as we did the floor. I'm going to show you how we did that. It's kind of a um, nice to do it, do it that way sometimes. A lot of times we used to pour the floor and then do the apron like another day because you don't want the concrete. First of all, the concrete for the apron is a different kind of concrete. That concrete is air entrained concrete. You want full air entrainment in that concrete because it's exterior grade concrete. And we do like a partial air entrainment inside these pole barns. Um, we don't do full air inside these. And by air entrainment is actually a chemical that they add to the concrete, guys. It actually leaves little bubbles inside the concrete. And, uh, this chemical will uh, make these air pockets inside the concrete and that gives the water a place to expand and contract so basically with that being said you wouldn't want to use the same concrete to pour the apron as you would um, inside the pole barn so what we did I'll show you here how we did it but we actually poured the floor and then finished a bunch of it and when it was hard enough to pull the skirt board off the end we uh, poured out the apron and we had the apron pretty much all formed out except one board so um, stay tuned I'll show you how we did that it's, it worked out really good and we didn't have to come back the next day Digger out for the apron. Gotta come down about four or five more inches to get to the bottom of that plate there. Got Carl working. Guys, here I'm just scratching out for the apron. Here, the um, we ended up doing a five foot apron on the end of this garage. So, or this pole barn. So, um, I got Carl the Kubota here, and we're just digging it out. And uh, we got into some rocky stuff right here. You can see it wasn't really fine material to work with, but we dug it out and tamped it all out and formed it. We had everything. You'll see here after we get done, we formed this all out, this apron. 
and had it all ready except one uh, board going across there. That's how we ended up doing this. See if you can find it. You only went to your place, right? Yeah, I only went to my place. Okay, guys, this is the barn we prepped yesterday. Um, we're pouring it. It's 6 30 this morning, and we're gonna pour this out at 7 o'clock. It's about 26 yards. We're using 4,000 psi concrete with fiber mesh in it. We got wire in here too, so have double reinforcement pay attention because we're going to pull the wire up with hooks so all the people that comment says we don't pull the wire we're going to pull the wire we got some hooks there's no radiant heat in here this time so that wire will get pulled up i'll have a guy with a hook right in his hand um, we're going to hang the power trowel back here guys um, because we're starting in the back of the floor we're going to actually set the power trowel up on there I'm in the back corner here, back left corner. That way this back's probably gonna dry quicker and I'm actually gonna open this window so I can climb through it. And that's gonna make it so we can come back to the back of this barn and start power trawling. Cause the, like I said, the back's gonna be the first place to dry. So I'll jump, jump right through one of these windows and uh, start edging the floor. Me and Frank are here setting up. He's putting the laser up, guys. That's how we're going to level this. It's got like cathedral trusses up in here. Sometimes you can take a board and bump it off these flat trusses. You can just cut a board to the length from the truss down to the top of the floor. And if everything's level, you can do it that way. But we're just going to use a laser because he's got half flat trusses here. And then they go to cathedral for some reason. Must be like a basketball court on this side or something. And he has a big he has a big fifth wheel he's putting in here but this is going to be nice because the door is 14 feet high so we can drive the trucks right in here set the grade to the top of that door frank that piece of wood right there that's going to be your height right there for some reason they put the skirt board higher than the floor on this barn which isn't a big deal so we're just gonna we snap some lines along the side there and that's going to be our reference I like it better when the board's at the top of the floor. That's usually how we get them. But this has a two by eight skirt board. Usually there's a two by four skirt board, or I'm sorry, two by six skirt board. And that gives you a five and a half to six inch floor and we'll, we'll trowel right off the top of that board. But like I said, on this one, we had to go around and uh, put some lines on it. Big biscuits in the house. Get some gas, dude. Yeah. All right. Uh, we're going to put that power trial back here, Jay, on this corner. So why don't you gas it up first? Okay. Fill it full of gas. That way it's uh, ready to go. Did you grab a speed square? No. No. Okay. That's all right. Seven. Oh, that's all right. You got some long stretches. I got a long. screed. We'll go point to point with the screed board on our marks. Uh, uh, but his has... In big letters on the side of it, power waving. These are the hooks that we pull up the wire with, guys. We made these. So when you see, I got a couple of them. So we'll have somebody just rip, reaping up, picking up the wire with these hooks as we pour it. And yeah, we walk on it after we pull it up, but the stones go underneath it. So it, you want the wire towards the bottom. So the stones tension that are in the side. concrete, you want it on the tension side, which is the bottom of the concrete. So. Yeah, it'll go down a little bit as we walk on it, but this is nice. You just hook it and pull it up into the concrete. That's how we do it. Hey, Frank. Find no bill, boys. Depends <laughs> on my dad. My dad wants it all the time. He's got, a, comes food. Just, He's got a pile. He's got a pile. Everybody thought I'd run you off because you weren't in the last video. Oh, really? Tell him you're still here. You got, a, here. You got another life besides Bondo built, right? Yeah. <laughs> She's ready to pour today, though. Mom, yep. God, yeah, yeah. Tell, tell your fans that. Everybody it? thought yeah. you quit on me or I run no. you off. <laughs> I'm a hairdresser, I'm a mom. Yep. 
She's just a part-time concrete girl and builder girl. Guys, if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button for me. And if you would, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of the video. Um, let me know if you've ever done it this way. Poured out an apron the same day or if you do it the next day like we used to do. Let me know that too. So we're going to put some wet screeds right at these poles, guys. Right here and here. Coming out this way. And we're going to use the laser to set them up. So we're going to set our grade about here and here. We're going to pull with the wet screed to them grade points. And then we're going to run this way with the power screed. Bing, bing, three in three pulls. And we're going to head towards the um, from back to front of this barn. That's how we're going to do it. This concrete we're pouring out here, guys, is, I don't know if I told you, but it's 4,000 pound concrete. And it's got, uh, it's got um, fiber, fibers in it. For reinforcement and we got the wire mesh down here too so um, this is good concrete it's got a lot of cement in it um, you can see we poured out some and uh, we got all the guys here and just pulling up wire so we we put a bunch of concrete down and we just ran around and pulled up all the wire so it's sitting on top of that concrete guys that's how that'll hold up the concrete the rocks that are in there and that's how we did it and here we are putting in some wet pads, guys, just wet concrete set at grade. And then I'm going to come in here with my power screed and just knock it down like that. That's how we do it. And we're going to hit the middle, and then we're going to hit the other side. And then we got Big Biscuit's going to come in here and float it. Here in a minute, he'll float that out right there. He's going to knock that down with the bow float. Right, now Big Biscuit's uh, laying it down with the bow float. Frank and Jess are putting some wire down. We didn't want the truck to drive on the wire. That's why we did it that way, guys. Now we'll just throw a couple rows of wire down. Put the curl roll up on it. Just two rows like this will be good. to dump these trucks out pretty fast guys because these trucks could drive right in this barn this barn had a 14 foot um, door on it which made it real nice that's usually not the case usually we can't get inside these barns a lot of times so I'm um, having one with a big door like that it's really nice and it there's no radiant heat in this one so had there been radiant heat in here we wouldn't have been able to drive in on top of the tubing so we would have had to use a different way to place it Pretty good right there. Let him lay it in, boys. That's gonna be nice right there. Stay out of his way for a sec. Let him get some in there. Woohoo! 
Hey, buddy. What's up, man? Where's the box, man? You better do good. Circle T right here, huh? Spot, yeah. <laughs> nice time to cool. I ain't scared. We had a little thick. He had to add a little water. But it's easier in time to take it out. <laughs> I never figured out how to take water out of concrete yet. I've, I've never used it. I never tried it. He's worked with some. I didn't find it bad. Yeah. 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 This second truck of concrete was actually a little bit thicker than the first batch, guys, and you kind of noticed it at the end when I finished it. You could tell the difference, but here we are putting in the wet pads again. Um, I'll hit the sides down through with the power screed to flatten them, and then I'll run right down the wet screeds with it right there. Guys, if you're not a subscriber yet, go down and hit that subscribe button for me, will you? That'll help my channel out a lot. I'm almost at 10,000 subscribers right now. A little bit thick. Cleaning that chute right out, guys. We want every bit of it. Mm -hmm. As you did clean the chute out, and you were like a wheelbarrow short, you know? You never know. Don't fall, buddy. Easy. Don't get hurt, kid. You're fired as soon as you hit the ground, right, Frank? Yep. If you fall. As soon as you actually you're fired before you hit the ground. <laughs> you're gone before you hit the ground. That's right. 
Yeah, he never worked for me. I don't know. I don't know who he is. I've never, I never seen no, that never dude seen before. before. I have no idea who that is. Yeah, what, what's his name? It was Derek, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he had a Derek working for me. Not him. I don't know who it is. Good thinking, Jeff. There's a wire in there. Mm -hmm. What? There should be three pieces for the apron left over. We need one more, Frank. Jason says he's got t shirt We got pens, we got shirts, circle T right there, taking care of us. Thanks, Jason. Appreciate it. I'll take one of them. Oh, take them all? Thanks. I'll put them in my truck. Thank you. Hey, then when we lose the markers, we got those. That's right. They look like they run small guys. Yeah. So guys, here we are. We're putting the skirt board. I call this the skirt board. It's just the board that goes over the door. So we're going to put that in. we got to set the laser up. We're just setting the laser up right here. And then we can level that with the laser. Make sure that's perfect. And uh, we took a lot of time to make sure this was really flat at the door. So you want to make sure that door seal comes down and hits really good on the floor. So you'll see... We did quite a bit of work with a 16 foot screed stick here in a minute to make sure that uh, we kept that nice and flat. Here we are, guys, and we're really, like I said, I'm puddling in and making sure that's really flat and level so that that door seals. So if that's not, that's not going to seal right and the water will leak in there. Here I'm coming across the sides. I got it in super fast forward here, guys. And then me and Frank are just pulling it right out with the straight edge. Here I didn't want to use a power screed in this area. I want to get it real flat. And that door's 16 foot, so that 16 foot screed works good. <laughs> Throw it on the ground. <laughs> oh, shit. One last pull here with the 16 footer to make sure everything's good. And then we got it. Pulled it right out. Right there, just making sure she's perfect. And then I'm just going to hand mag along there with an edger. Yeah, I'm just edging it right here, guys. Just setting the stones with a brass edger so that all them stones are set. And then I went through and floated it with my mag float. Okay, guys, here we are. Got the concrete all in. This is what it looks like. We're just waiting on it. Probably go get something to eat. And uh, you can see the bleed water on it, guys. We don't want to touch it while there's bleed water on it. You can see that, especially right in here. The last truck, you can see the bleed water in it. 
So we'll let the heat of the concrete will burn that bleed water off, guys, and then we can get on it. So the first thing we're going to do is run around the edges with the knee boards. So stay tuned. That's what we're going to do next. As soon as this, like I said, it, we got to let it dry up a little bit. Right now it's really soft. I'm going to probably climb through that window right there, me and Trevor. Everybody else we, we sent off, um, got some doing some other work. Well, me and Trevor are going to finish this. And then we're going to pour this apron later. We're going to let this edge dry and get this face pretty good. And then the last thing we're going to do today is pour this apron right here. I just got to put a board in it. And it's got a pitch to it too. And that'll just be a broom finish. So that's what we're doing right now. So I forgot to open the back window. Well, I opened the back window. I forgot to take the screen out of it. So Trevor's trying to shimmy along the wall to get to the back here. I'll give you a better angle. Without stepping in the concrete, because the back's a little bit drier than the front, obviously, because that's where we started. Here, I'm just hitting along the front of this doorway again, guys. That's what I'm doing here. Just there's a taper to that doorway. We actually tapered that. So right where, where the door seals, there's a probably a three quarter inch taper from where the door seals to the outside edge. And that keeps the water from running back into the building under the door. That's why we do that. You can see the taper in that, guys. And we still haven't pulled that board off yet, but we're gonna soon pull that board off. How's she looking, bud? Not bad. Not bad? Uh, we're waiting on the back half, guys, to catch up to the middle. That middle was a little bit thicker. Um, the slump was a little tighter. So that's what we're doing. This is, we're waiting on this little bit here. It's got some bleed water on it still, as you can see. The middle had no bleed water on it, so we jumped out there and knocked that down. You could still see a little bleed water in the back, but the back's just about ready to hit with the power trowel for the first time. Um, I'm working this edge right here. Just knocking this down here. Usually these doorways will dry out first before the rest of the floor. Just because the sun's right here, or the wind. It's outside the building, so we like to keep up with these. I'll get better with each pass. Here I'm just starting a knee board behind this doorway, guys. It's a little too soft so to get on there with the power trowel. So I'm just going along and hitting behind the door and everything. Can't really reach in there good anyways. I like these foam knee boards when it, the concrete's soft. We just use pieces of polystyrene. That's how we do that. There I am hitting the door again. Trevor's out there. I'm going to hit it with the power trowel. I didn't take a lot of footage of power trowel on this one because this video is long enough as it is, but um, I got other power trowel videos if you want to look at them. I'm just half lapping along. This is the first time. The middle was ahead of the front and back. Like I said, when we poured it, the second truck driver had that um, the middle load pretty dry, and I added some water to it, but uh, not evidently not enough because the middle of this floor dried before the back and the front actually the back was the last thing to dry guys which is kind of weird it was the first thing we poured but there wasn't any sun or wind that got back there so in this, it was kind of shady that day it wasn't raining or nothing okay guys we're gonna pull the form board out of the floor where the door is, the bulkhead, we call it. We're gonna pull that out. And then we're gonna pour this apron right here. 
Trevor's taking it off of there. And we're gonna pour that apron and it's 2.30. We poured the floor at 7 a.m. We were done by nine. It's still a little wet in there. We've hit it about three times. Still got a lot of fat in it. So we're gonna get this apron done. You don't wanna pour the apron along right in with the floor if you can help it. If you do, you'll have to cut it because you don't want them hooked together. So that's why we did it like this. We're gonna be real gentle on it. I would, I would undermine it with a hammer. If you undermine it with the hammer, it'll come out easier. We don't wanna screw it up. Let's scrape that off with something, okay? Let's take a trowel or something and scrape it right off. Okay, guys, that's how you do it. We got a nice clean edge there. So now we can pour our uh, apron. They should be here in about 15, 20 minutes to get this apron poured. So we poured this out guys at seven o'clock in the morning this the whole barn and it was about i can't remember if it was like 3 30 3 15 when we did the apron it was about the latest we could do the apron with the concrete company you know they wanted to be done for the day and get their guys out out of there so that's how we did it um like i said it's just a different kind of concrete this has full air entrainment in it so um this won't freeze and pop and you wouldn't want to use the interior grade outside as it wouldn't hold up you know the stones would end up popping on it so that's how we do it right there guys and i think it worked pretty good let me know if you do it a little different or if there was a better way to do it that you know of but that's pretty much how we did it we did instead of doing it in two pours like two different days we did it in the same day Worked out good for us. We don't have to come back there. We did have to come back the next day and saw cut it. I didn't. Um, I didn't video that, but Big Biscuit actually saw cut it the next day. I showed him how to do it, and he did it. He did a good job. So right here, guys, I got a knee board on the hard finished surface because I I can't leave any tracks there. And I'm trying to reach into the apron and get the edges real good where you can't reach it. Um, I'm stealing up some cream and filling in the rock holes along this edge between the two. And that's how I'm doing that. And then I'm kind of hard trawling the doorway where my knee board was. So I got like a mag in one hand and a hard trowel in the other hand, a, a finished trowel. So I'm closing all that up there. All that right there had rock holes along the along the edge of it and then jason's behind me with the um we call that a funny float that tool he's got right there he's funny float and that's like a mag on a stick guys that works pretty good but he couldn't get them rock holes in there that wouldn't seal up so i had to reach them from the knee boards that's how we did it Okay guys, here it is, got her done, come out really nice, and it's been about 12 and a half hours since we started, so it took a while to dry, not a lot of sun gets in there, we got this apron done, stripped it, the only thing we didn't do is put grooves in it, I'll have to cut it, so 
So tomorrow I'll cut the apron and I'll cut the floor. And uh, that's it. Thanks for watching the video, guys, and I'll see you on the next one.